Great afternoon to all. I um, want to start off by thanking BCA friends and uh, IBW for inviting me this afternoon to share the thoughts of uh, this idea of future buildings or put it as buildings of tomorrow. Um, honestly, I have to confess, I struggle with the title of it. I was like, oh my goodness, buildings of tomorrow. So I did, and, and it was interesting when I heard Ron and I heard uh, Alvin, I was telling so many architects and engineers are really different when they talk about buildings of tomorrow. <laughs> so I'll show you how different it can be. Okay, so obviously, like all architects, we start to dissect that brief. What is this whole thing about buildings of tomorrow? And this is uh, the, the area of possibilities. So obviously we talk about space, uh, for us the context of ideas of form, the place itself. Buildings to us are extension of uh, architecture, which is actually something a lot more holistic. Another lecture, all right, talks about ecosystem. The idea of uh, tomorrow, of, of course, it relates to time. I think in this case, uh, uh, Elvin brought the perspective of, of technology, the power of it. I think there's always a part that comes with uh, the whole celebration and the imagination of future. And most importantly, I thought, is uh, actually the part on relationship of uh, what it is as a part to a bigger whole. And really, as uh, both Ron and Elvin stress, it's really the purpose behind what they're doing. So I started with how everybody does. You look for your best friend Google. This is uh, on the website. So when you Google and say buildings of tomorrow, this is the whole host of, uh, of uh, images you get. So there's a whole series of imagination. I was like, all right, okay, so which one should I pick? And I picked none. So, uh, and what is interesting is the, the narratives and dialogue of buildings of tomorrow uh, has in fact started in our own local space. So this is uh, actually some of the visuals by one of our uh, local talent, uh, Woha, when they talk about master plan for Singapore 2050. Not a, far, a bit of distance away, but actually imaginable. And uh, there were different subjects, I think primarily addressing challenges of tomorrow. So yeah, that was at least something to start. And uh, interesting enough, myself, I was uh, involved in uh, our National Day Parade 2016 and the theme was for 2060, no, it was 100, SG100. That was just a year after we celebrated our 50th birthday as a nation and I uh, thought this is something quite fun. So put some music, sweeten my voice a bit. So but the whole idea of the, the, the show itself, so as we designed with the, the team, it's uh, really looking at what are the components and aspects of our vision towards the future. So the idea of buildings of tomorrow, one kind of grand idea was he has this entire sky city. So that's for, for participants during the show, you'll see the entire city kind of uh, just appear out of nowhere and emerge from the sky, uh, right, right up into the sky. And then kind of different components, a lot of uh, lights, <laughs> And, but I think importantly, it was uh, really the kind of uh, almost a peek into potentially what could it be. Uh, yeah. So, started with the crystal ball. Still very difficult. So I said, okay, let's start with these two roles. So earlier shared, a part is uh, at least myself in the capacity of uh, advocate for the profession, Singapore Institute of Architects. I think the institute itself has been uh, for many, many years uh, within, uh, I would say, debating within the space, this whole discourse of what is it in terms of uh, our imagination of, say, tomorrow. And these were some of the themes. One of our flagship events is our Archifest that really talks about uh, various aspects of what the future holds for us and the capacity of how design or architecture can allow us to work closer towards that dream. And uh, a very important trigger point, at least nationally, is uh, this very report. In short, in Singapore, we call it CFE. So the Committee on Future Economy, which sets effectively the chart, the entire kind of action plan for uh, all the different sectors of our economy uh, using the industry transformation map as the very vehicle for us to plan the future. So for SIA, 
our own interpretation of uh, this transformation should be by design, obviously, to that's the very fundamental act as an architect, or the basis of our practice. And the idea of by design is really for purpose. The 2.0 is in fact uh, the second chapter because it was for, for this second term. And it wasn't just looking at what architecture could do in terms of this transformation, but really related to the earlier two speakers, there's a larger ecosystem that's needed when we talk about major change. This is the key area. One very important aspect of how we talk about future to start, it's about integration. So besides the four pillars that uh, how the institutes and some of our initiatives are planned, more important for us is really the ethos that ties uh, the very act of our practice. In terms of sustainability and livability, the whole idea of looking at the act of our practice, not just the enterprising but ethical way, talk about innovation and upscaling, and very importantly, collaboration and social responsibility. Uh, so in my day job with uh, DP Architects, so we are, I was just sharing earlier, two years younger than our precious nation. It's been around in the local uh, urban landscape for quite a bit um, and have successfully ventured overseas. So we have also expanded from, say, the architectural core to a multidisciplinary design practice because we believe that in today's context, when we talk about solution, it's no longer singular. And that's something very important. So, three key aspects, easy to remember. The key, it starts from design and it's always about people. Alright? There's a whole ecosystem of how this talks about, again, leadership in terms of drivers, working with data, like what Elvin says, generating discourse, and also controlling the tools. Being master of it instead of being slaves. And uh, we have measures of how we assess projects, again, in various sectors of sustainable kind of matrix. And uh, we know that it is, as I shared, important for us to look as we move towards uh, designing towards the future, the control of these tools. But more importantly, it's not just about the, the kind of pretty visuals, the advanced geometry, it's really about the experience that it brings back to the users. And uh, these are areas that uh, we are looking at in terms of driving that space towards the future. And again, something that uh, also partially touched on by Ron and Alvin and the different facets of what the future holds for us in terms of connectivity, in terms of how we imagine concepts of wellness, ideas of consumption, production. So, but we are very mindful. Technology, there's a plus, but there's also a challenge. Uh, we are ever connected by the very device that oh, somehow I'm a bit lost because I'm not holding it. But yet, we are uh, the more or less present. And, um, and there's a whole host of challenges that, again, we know our world and the future world is being um, kind of put on in terms of uh, pressure. Whether is it about the larger economic uncertainties, uh, issues of climate change and digital disruption. But most importantly, as an architect, uh, one of the singular issue that we think is the root of all this disparity is really the idea of fragmentation of silos. In fact, I would argue that uh, the whole idea of why there is even a challenge in terms of driving action about climate change is because we continue to talk about economics, environmental and social as separate uh, sectors and dimension. There's seldom the discussion of a total impact. And, and what is interesting about uh, the power of uh, technology is that for the first time, we have the capacity to highlight all these gaps and overlap. And, and that's why there's this major disarray uh, that we are facing about the various, uh, whether it's global economic system, environmental or social system that we have. And uh, I take you from this quote I shared earlier in one of the earlier uh, other panel discussion um, that it's about changing the environment if we want to change behavior. Alright? So, key thing, and it's talking about synergy. And that's where we believe, Ron and I, and assuming, at least from an architectural perspective, that the power uh, of design is its capacity to allow us to synergize uh, all these different silos and fragments. And it's talking about not just the role of architects in terms of what we're traditionally known for, 
but really the aspects of economics, environmental and social roles that we can play to really allow change to take place in leaps and bounds. And most importantly, and most powerfully in terms of our abilities, is this aspect of synthesis. And that extends to really the concept of uh, roles for future buildings, is the ability to integrate. Just wanted to uh, highlight uh, the notion of integration and um, there's already a global kind of benchmark in terms of the UN 17 Sustainable Design Goals that uh, I think it's important that we look at uh, that as a source of avenue of where this larger synthesis and integration can take place. I think to start off with, when we talk about future buildings, it's important to look at city because buildings they are nested within cities. So, in terms of this uh, antithesis of the larger fragmentation, at least our precious island, uh, in terms of concept, has been driving this notion of the integration between the various the core parts of the foot plate, pushing it further in terms of how it can embed uh, more than just singular use and meaning. I think Singapore is a successful case. Of course, globally, we have seen uh, this different so-called integrated district taking place. But within Singapore, I think our aspirations of uh, moving towards the city of tomorrow uh, already has uh, kickstart several imaginations of future sites, whether it's public sector driven or private sector driven, of how this concept of uh, uh, integrated component can take place. Of course, in the context of buildings, it's something that we think is of value. And um, to start, thought to really project forward is to really understand what are imminent kind of issues that the future holds for us. So we know in terms of singular component like malls, earlier it was a 